Suppose I have a contravariant tensor of rank 1, which I'll call v, so basically a vector, and the components of v in the x super i coordinate system are given by v super j, which in general are dependent on my coordinates x super i. A couple of videos ago I spoke about how taking the simple partial derivative of the tensor's components with respect to some coordinate x super i results in a quantity that is not a tensor, unless we were only looking at coordinate transformations that were affine, so coordinate transformations where the new coordinates are some linear combination of the old coordinates. That's because if we look at the transformation law for the simple derivative, we end up with the following expression as we go from the unbarred x super i coordinate system to the barred x super i bar coordinate system. For this expression to represent a tensor transformation law, this mixed partial term would have to be zero, which can only happen in an affine coordinate transformation. I'm going to call this equation 1, by the way. So that's it. It's hopeless. The derivative of a tensor doesn't transform like a tensor in most cases, so we should just pack it up and quit tensor calculus. And I should quit YouTube considering tensor calculus is my most popular subject. Well, not quite. It's not as hopeless as, say, your prospect of buying a house, thanks Trudeau, or your prospect of paying off your student loans. There is a workaround here. But the workaround involves taking a different type of derivative, so not the simple derivative like what we have up here, but the covariant derivative of a tensor. Now, the covariant derivative of a tensor will ultimately transform like a tensor, and I'll show you how in this video on covariant differentiation. But first, let's recall the previous video where I derived the transformation laws for both kinds of Christoffel symbols. Specifically, we derived this transformation law for the Christoffel symbol of the second kind in which we go from the barred coordinate system to the unbarred coordinate system. This was equation 8 in the last video. Now in this equation, the same mixed partial derivative term that's present in the transformation law for the simple derivative, the one I underline, is also present in equation 8 right over here. The indices are a bit different, but we'll take care of that later. If I try to isolate the term involving this mixed partial derivative, this is what I get. Now, I want to completely isolate this mixed partial derivative, and the way to do that is to multiply both sides by the partial of x super p bar with respect to x super i. I can't multiply by the partial of x super r bar with respect to x super i, because then I would have the index r in three different places in the same term, and that's just straight up not allowed in Einstein notation. So I have to use a different index to keep the notation clean. So this is my equation that I end up with after that multiplication. Now because I have x super i in the numerator and denominator in this partial derivative pair, and in this partial derivative pair, both of these pairs reduce to the Kronecker delta symbol. The first becomes the Kronecker delta with the indices r and p, and the second becomes the Kronecker delta with the indices u and p. This Kronecker delta symbol is 1 only when p equals r and is 0 otherwise. This other Kronecker delta symbol is 1 only when p equals u and is 0 otherwise. So on the left, that means I just need to replace the r's by the p's, and on the right, I just need to replace the u's by the p's. If I do that, I end up with this equation for the mixed partial derivative of the barred coordinate with respect to two unbarred coordinates. Now let's do a tally of the indices on both sides. On the left we've got the indices p, j, and k, which are all free indices, so indices that only occur once in each term. On the right we've got p, j, and k again as our free indices, but we also have i, r, and s as dummy indices, meaning indices that are repeated twice, indices that are summed over. I want to make this equation consistent with the partial derivative that I underlined at the beginning of the video, the mixed partial that comes up in the simple differentiation of our tensor component. To do that, I'm going to change my free index p on both sides to i, change the j to r, and the k to an s. Meanwhile, to prevent redundancy and to prevent screwing up on my rotation, I'm also going to simultaneously change the dummy index i on the right to m, r to n, and s to p. And when I do that, I get this equation for the mixed partial derivative term. Just as a tip, if you're dealing with complicated equations like these in tensor calculus where there's multiple indices involved, it's usually a good idea to do a mental check if you're going to be changing around indices to make sure that the free and dummy indices on both sides check out, kind of like what we did here. Anyway, this mixed partial derivative that I've got here matches the mixed partial derivative I underline in equation 1 because now my indices are consistent after I change them around just now. So what I'll do is I'll plug in this mixed partial derivative term directly into equation 1, our equation for the coordinate derivative of the component of a contravariant rank 1 tensor. We'll now expand out the second term to get the following, and now let's make some simplifications.
This term involving the product of t super r and the partial of x super n bar with respect to x super r, this term by definition of the contravariant transformation law is really just the transformation law for the contravariant vector component t super n. Meanwhile, the product of these last two partial derivative terms, which both involve the same denominator with the partial of x super s, this product just becomes the Kronecker delta symbol with the indices p and k. And since this Kronecker delta symbol is zero everywhere except when p equals k, I just have to replace all my p indices in this last term with k. And when the dust settles, this is what we'll end up with. Let's now focus on the second term. Both the indices r and m in the second term are dummy indices, they're being summed over, so I'm allowed to change them to any other index as long as I'm being consistent. So to simplify my expression, what I'll do is I'll change the dummy index m in the second term to r, and change the dummy index r to t. When I do that, here's what I end up with. We'll now finish setting up this equation with a couple of final steps. We're going to move all the terms in the barred coordinate system to one side and leave the unbarred terms on the right. We're also going to take these two partial derivative terms common that show up in the first two terms on the right. When I do that, this is what I finally end up with, and I'll call this equation 2. Let's analyze this equation for a bit. This whole quantity on the left, which involves the partial derivative of my contravariant tensor component with respect to a coordinate, as well as a transformed second kind Christoffel symbol, this whole quantity on the left is basically the barred version of this whole quantity on the right that's inside the parentheses. And to go from this unbarred term in the parentheses to the barred expression on the left, we have to multiply by these two partial derivative terms. One of these terms has a barred coordinate on top, the other has a barred coordinate on the bottom. Now, does this equation 2 remind you of anything? It should, because it's the transformation law for a mixed tensor of contravariant rank 1 and covariant rank 1. And what is this tensor? It's the quantity whose components are represented in the parentheses on both sides. This sum of the simple partial derivative of the tensor and this term involving the Christoffel symbol of the second kind. This whole quantity has a name in fact, it's called the covariant derivative of the tensor t with respect to the coordinate x super k bar. So in general, if I have a contravariant tensor of rank 1 with components t super i, the covariant derivative of this tensor with respect to the coordinate x super k is defined by the following quantity, which represents the components of a tensor with a contravariant rank 1 and covariant rank 1. The short form way to write the covariant derivative of t with respect to the coordinate x super k is to write t with a semicolon k subscript at the bottom. The semicolon k subscript denotes that you've taken the covariant derivative of t with respect to x super k. Now, why is it called the covariant derivative? Well, it's because when I start out with a contravariant tensor of rank 1, taking the covariant derivative of this tensor spits out a quantity that ends up being a mixed tensor with contravariant rank 1 and covariant rank 1. So just by taking the covariant derivative, I actually add a covariant rank onto my original tensor. And that's why it's called covariant differentiation, because it results in a tensor with an additional covariant rank. Now, the formula for the covariant derivative of a covariant tensor is a bit different. Let's now derive this formula. So to do that, let's start with the tensor transformation law of this covariant tensor. To derive the covariant derivative, we'll take the simple partial derivative of both sides with respect to x super k bar. And when I do that, this is what I end up with. Note that I've already used the product rule on the right-hand side to split things up. Now, I can use the chain rule on the partial of t sub r with respect to x super k bar by recognizing that t sub r is a function of all the unbarred coordinates x super 1, x super 2, and so on, and that each of these unbarred coordinates is a function of the barred coordinate x super k bar. By recognizing this, I can easily rewrite this partial derivative of t sub r as the partial of t sub r with respect to x super s times the partial of x super s with respect to x super k bar. Note that s is the dummy index that's repeated twice, so we're actually summing over it here. And I actually did something similar when deriving my expression for the Christoffel symbol transformation law. With this in mind, let's plug this back into our simple derivative equation to get the following. We are once again stuck in a similar situation like we were with the simple derivative of a contravariant tensor. The simple derivative of a covariant tensor of rank 1 transforms like a covariant tensor of rank 2, but only if we look at coordinate transformations where this mixed partial derivative is zero, so affine coordinate transformations. I'm going to call this equation 3. Now, 
Once again, we do have a way out of this. If I go back to equation 7 from my previous video where I derived the transformation law for the second kind Christoffel symbol as we go from unbarred coordinates to barred coordinates, then we can see that this equation also has a mixed partial derivative term with an unbarred coordinate at the top and two barred coordinates at the bottom. So if we now isolate this mixed partial derivative and change some indices to make things consistent with our mixed partial term in equation 3, this is what we'll end up with. I didn't show the algebra this time because it's very similar to how we isolated the mixed partial derivative earlier in the video, so I'll just leave it to you as an exercise. Now when I plug this back into equation 3, this is what I get, where I've already distributed the t sub r among the two terms. I'm also going to change some dummy indices on the right, so I'll change the s in the second term to t, and in the third term I'll change the t to an s, and s to the r, and the r to the t. Now in this term, the combination of t sub r and the partial of x super r is really just the transformation law for t sub t bar because it's a covariant rank 1 tensor. So now if I move all the barred terms to the left side and leave the unbarred terms on the right, and if I take these two partial derivative terms common, this is what I end up with. I'm going to call this equation 4. Now just like with the covariant derivative of our contravariant tensor, the quantity in the parentheses on the right and left represents the covariant derivative of our covariant tensor. You can see that this whole quantity transforms like a covariant tensor of rank 2 based on the partial derivatives multiplying the right hand side. So in general, if I have a covariant tensor of rank 1 with components t sub i, the covariant derivative of this tensor with respect to the coordinates x super k is defined by the following quantity, which represents the components of a tensor with a covariant rank 2. Again, the short form way to write the covariant derivative of t with respect to the coordinate x super k is to write t with a semicolon k subscript at the bottom. You can see that the covariant derivative of a covariant tensor has a minus in front of its Christoffel symbol term, and that the covariant derivative of the contravariant tensor has a plus. The indices on the Christoffel symbol that we're summing over are also different between the two, and that's why I derive both formulas separately because there isn't an exact correspondence between the covariant derivative of a contravariant tensor versus the covariant derivative of a covariant tensor. Now in general, if you wanted to find the covariant derivative with respect to x super k of a general mixed tensor of contravariant rank p and covariant rank q, then this would be your formula for the covariant derivative. You'd subtract a second kind Christoffel symbol term for each covariant rank, and you'd add a second kind Christoffel symbol term for each contravariant rank. You can derive this yourself if you want, but I'll warn you that the notation can get quite cumbersome. Anyway, that should do it for this video. I'd like to thank the following patrons for their support, and if you enjoyed the lesson, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.